I know very little about this tape deck and it, as you can see, is in pretty rough condition. Uh, it is a Craig model 403. I did a search on the internet for this model and can't find anything on it anywhere. I'm going to continue to look, but I think I might have run into something that's uh, rather unusual. So I thought this was a, a cute little sticker that was put on here as advertised Craig as advertised in look playboy sales management Esquire and true so I even got the sticker uh, the original sticker that was on the leather case and it is leather with a felt backing it's pretty dirty has some a little damage is a little tab missing oh no there isn't there it is I was gonna say there's a missing snap right there it is so actually the the uh, case is in gorgeous condition I think I can get this glue off without removing the paint or the dye in the leather and I'm sure gonna try a couple of things but you can see that even the sewing is in beautiful condition so that's that's great. I'm glad to see that that was still in in place. This is a very unusual tape recorder, and I believe a much earlier Craig than any of their other models, a number of their other models. And for the main reason is that if you look here at the interface, um, external S. U P. I'm not even sure what that's. I'm not even sure what that means. Maybe some kind of a control or a speaker. Well, there's an output there. There's the microphone jack. If you look, it's the little double plug. Very unusual. And the microphone. Um, I guess motor switch. So this would be the the. Uh, remote control on a microphone so I don't have the original mic um, which is not a problem we can figure something out with the, those connectors so let's open this up and take a look at see the Craig model 403 and it has a JVC and I don't know if that's the same JVC that we're all familiar with but I'm opening this up uh, for the first time, and you can see how dirty it is. And it's, it needs some work. The chrome is in fairly good condition, but very dirty. This tape deck is a dual speed. It's been stuck in place, so there's no telling how what condition the pinch roller is going to be in. But it's a dual speed, which means that this capstan roller here will be removed is removable and you put it up here to store it so right now it's in three and three quarter speed and with it moved up to that position it would run in one and seven eighths so it's a two speed tape recorder capstan roll which means that it should have a pretty stable um, audio and, and maybe even be able to record uh, music. This very interesting lever, still in pretty good shape, a little bit of grunge on it. So, got an, a level, I'm assuming battery level and uh, record level. Let me get it up on the screen there. Um, it has a uh, Chrome volume control, a chrome speaker grill, and this is metal. This is metal painted that 1950s brown crinkle paint, whatever you call that. I've got a couple of other tape decks that do that. That, And then a great big battery compartment. So let's get into this and see what the battery compartment looks like. Even the even the 
latch is chrome. Wow, this is gorgeous. So get a good shot of that. We can count the number of transistors. Let me get a pen or a pointing stick. Here we go. Let's see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six transistor. Yes, yeah, six transistors. And it is TR403. Interesting, the top thing didn't have a TR in front of it. So I might need to do a search for TR403. Maybe that's why I didn't catch it. There's the serial number. Wow, it takes four. I think the 1015 is double A. I'm pretty sure that 1015 is double A. So it takes 10 AA batteries, if I'm counting that correctly. A 6-volt pack and a 9-volt pack. And apparently they can be recharged. I'm not sure if there's external power connector. You know what? Maybe that's what that jack was. External supply. I'll bet that's it. We could look at the schematic. Uh, look, look a little closer here. I'm going to hold this and then zoom in on the schematic. But there is a bridge rectifier there. So it has some kind of an AC connector. And I can't see this real well. I'm going to have to zoom in on this. Yeah, external supply. Right there, external supply. And there are your battery packs. So there are the external supply connectors. And they go up and hit this bridge, rec bridge rectifier. And then you probably send power back down to the batteries to charge them. So there's the microphone and the motor switch. I'm assuming that the motor switch, let's see if I can, I can just barely read this with my eyesight. Not sure, but I'm pretty sure that that's the motor control. And you can see the mic comes right up here and uh, comes up and through the uh, setter, the, excuse me, the control switch ends up back up in, into the uh, amplifier. So it's push-pull amp. And those are, if I can read them correctly, yeah, PNPs. So, there's the schematic. Look at this switch. Look at this latch. I mean, that is fine detail work right there. Okay, here we go. JVC, Victor Company of Japan. Victor Company of Japan, Tokyo. So, I've learned something here. Victor Company used the Craig label. And it's called a hand quarter. Now this thing weighs, let's see how heavy it is. I don't not even sure this will carry the weight. Uh, but let's see. All right. All right, it does carry the weight, 2,000 grams. Let's change it to pounds. Four and a half pounds. So it's pretty chunky. Pretty chunky. And it looks like there are batteries in here. So that included the battery power. Let's check and see if the battery packs are still in place. There's that four battery pack. I'm really not sure how they come out. There we go. Shows the serial number, 52497. 
and the battery pack look at that very old corroded batteries that one's been leaking it hasn't done too much damage thank goodness started leaking there so we're going to chuck those batteries and we'll have to clean up some of that alkaline but there's the pack I think that's the amplifier I think that's what they said yeah the four the four batteries are the amplifier and the uh, there's six batteries for the motor that's a honking big motor nine volt battery all right before we go any deeper let's just take a look at the circuit board here with all of its spider webs The germanium transistors are mount, not even mounted on the board uh, directly. They're above wired with shrink, with shrink tubing. You see that? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe this is the push-pull amp section right here. And then there's some uh, driver and preamps. There are caps, all these little caps. No telling whether those caps are any good or not, but we'll find out. And look, they took a switch here, just a standard switch, mounted it to the board, and I'm assuming that that gets at, uh, switched. Yeah, you can see it switched in on record. I'm holding the record button here, and I'm moving this over. Oops battery pack fell out getting ahead of myself here okay but yeah that switches it into record mode see that and if we don't push the button it'll only go to play it won't go any further than than play okay Alrighty. There's a pot right there, glued down. Might be the bias, record bias, maybe. I don't know anything about this. I really don't. And uh, I'm looking forward to researching and finding out if it's even going to be able to be repaired. There's the motor. The, the, I, I don't know if the motor will turn. Feels like it's bound up. I can see the set screw on the motor. So let's see if I can get it to turn. Oh yeah, it turns, barely. Very stiff. But that's the motor right there. And it's a rim drive or a driven uh, pulley or whatever in there. We'll have to get into this and find out. There's the head wire for the from from the, re, the record and playback head slipped out of its hole there, and that's the uh, ground uh, shielded wire and the two wires probably record and playback. Let's see, does it have two heads or just one? Record playback, and then it has a separate erase head. All right, let's take another look or take a look at this other battery pack. Oh my, these batteries don't look very good condition. Just started leaking. See the discoloration, the alkaline of the batteries coming out there. Swollen. But thankfully, look at how nice, uh, what condition the terminals are in. Beautiful shape. So I think we're going to be in good shape with, with this. They even got a little piece of uh, support there to hold this pack from 
swelling out from all the pressure. And then they've got this cover that slides over, which is pretty cool. So I can feel that battery acid on my hands. I'm going to have to wash my hands before we go much further. So there's the batteries. Those are going into the trash. All right. So it looks like that might just be some foam for the edge of the battery pack. Yeah, there's some foam here and there's foam in there to kind of soften the battery pack. There was some foam here at one time, probably. And of course we saw the foam on the, the missing foam on the, the uh, battery cover. So this will have to be cleaned off and replaced. All right. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's just oh, and there's a missing Sony label right there. I can 3D print something and plan to do so if I can't find an original. Um, so I've I've got to find a photograph of this tape recorder somewhere, and I have looked, but I didn't look for a TR403. So we'll. Uh, We'll start there and see if we can find an actual photograph. This battery cover is warped and kind of bent. I don't, yeah, you probably can see some of it. This dip bent here. I'm sure you can see that on camera, but it's been crushed. It needs to be straightened out a little bit. It's very soft metal. I just bent it just now, straightened it out a little bit. So it's very soft. So I've got to be careful not to to stress it but in remarkable condition considering its age I'm sure it's it's quite old and this is going to have to be glued back in I need to keep that in stop not in play I don't want that pinch roller to get any messed more messed up there's the the uh, cover in beautiful chrome but it's, it needs to be glued back in. This has been crushed. I can see that's bent. If you can look here, you can see how bent this support is. So I get a kick out of this chrome or, or polished pop metal volume knob. That is not plastic. Even this trim piece here that says loud is metal. I don't think there's a piece of plastic on this thing unless... This cover, no, even this cover is metal. Even the tape head cover is metal. This will turn out to be a real beauty. I'm hoping and hoping and hoping that the tires are not destroyed. There's the capstan drive tire. So we're going to get into it here and find, see what we can find. I think we'll start with taking the chrome top off here, pulling these implements off, the handle and the tape reels, and we'll um, we'll see if we can get to the to the rubber belts and all this. This is real stiff, so that's gummed up because that should spin freely. All right, let's get into it. Chrome coated screws, very nice. Pretty impressive, Craig. Well, now, if that doesn't look vintage, I don't know what does. Look at that. Look at that. That is on the take-up reel. And it's spinning freely, so I'm not really sure what all happens here. So let's just try putting the control arm back on. 
Man, that grease. It's like tar. You can see that tar glue that they used on the the face here. All right, so we're in the stop position right now. So if we go into play, this should engage the capstan, and it does. And this drops down and engages this rubber wheel for take up. Okay, and there's a little bit of friction there. So the take up reel will turn and turn this, but not enough to pull it. We don't want the tape to be pulled by anything other than the connection between the pinch roller and the cap stand. So this should be just enough pressure to pull the tape or make up or take up the slack on the reel. So let's go back to play again and make sure oh yeah this is almost glued this is really really tight alright so there's obviously some goop in there we're gonna have to clean up but this should spin freely in play because it's just um, pulling just enough there's no need for tension let me let me explain a couple of things here which you may already be aware of if you'll notice the this back plate this back plate when it's in play snaps up you see it it snaps up and attack and presses the tape into the heads to make really good contact and that keeps tension on the tape as it's pulled through, pulled through right through here, and then wound. So without this, the tape would just flutter on the tape head, and you wouldn't get a good connection between the tape and the tape head. On tape drives that don't have precision capstan and pinch roller setups like this, they used a little bit of back tension on the rewind spool to keep to make the tape tight so it would pull here with the, the rim would pull here and this would drag a little bit and make the tape really tight as it passed over the heads as well as using a little bit of a pad there for keeping the, the tape in contact so anytime on those rim drive tapes you had either a little bit goop on their take up reel causing a little bit of drag or if these pads were dirty or gummy and dragged on the back of tape or if the tape is old and rough the back side of the tape is rough that would all affect the speed of the tape and the consistency of the tape to go through and so you get all kinds of uh, wow and flutter problems on those earlier tapes so all right so everything's working here let's see rewind yeah rewind bumps up here and engages the rewind spool so there's the, the motor you see the motor and this is free now see how it spins this motor has a drive pin on it right there and that's pushing against the bottom of this wheel so everything's moving so there's rewind and then off and then play and you notice uh, the take up reel is turning but there's just a little bit of pressure there just a little bit of pressure and that's because there's a brake a spindle brake if you'll notice that spindle brake right there when we stop it so we're rewinding everything's spinning fast this is spinning fast and then as soon as you hit stop watch this break okay so that's spinning and then we hit the stop and then it's it grabs it stops it from spinning it's really tight if you didn't have that you would be rewinding and this would be going crazy and then you'd hit stop and this would continue to spin and tape would spill out all over the the deck so you had to have these brakes on rewind now they don't have fast forward on these units and that there are very few of these reel-to-reel -reel tape decks that use the fast forward 
I've got a couple in my collection that have a push button that allows for fast forward, but most of them didn't didn't use fast forward. They figured, what do you need fast forward? You got regular forward, or you can flip the tapes over and rewind it real fast if you wanted to do that. So, all right, the 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 transport system is surprisingly in good shape, other than a little bit of a stiff rewind spool we're gonna to have to oil that you feel it kind of it feels a little gummy but other than that I think really this would probably play right just like it is so we'll uh, pull these spindles out clean them re-oil them I might put a drop of oil in the motor there we'll see how the motor is running it may not need any attention whatsoever and we'll see I hope I'm hoping that there are no if this was left in the play position there are a lot of problems that could ar uh, arise for example where the motor here contacts the bottom of this tire if it's left in that position for months and months and months and years there'll be a, a notch in them. And you've seen a lot of my videos probably where we've had to grind these tires down and try to get rid of that bump. We'll know here in a minute if we can get it to run if there's any bumps because you'll be able to hear it or feel it on the tape deck bump, 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 bump as it runs over that. Right. So let's take a few things apart here. Let's go ahead and pull this spindle up and I'll get into that and get these two off and then we'll start the tape back. Um, after a little bit of study, I figured out that these caps just twist off. They're threaded. They even have a little bit of a spring here for the tape. To catch nicely so that's really nice touch there most of the tape recorders that I have wouldn't go anywhere near that kind of trouble they didn't use that kind of a retainer at all and so now underneath that cap we have the spindle retaining screw And there's a break here that just released. We'll see it in a minute. Oh yeah, it's pretty gummy. So let's make sure we don't lose that cap screw, retaining screw. So there you have it, chrome. Everything that's exposed and can be seen from above is chrome. Nice touch, very high quality. In fact, this whole spindle is removable. And if you'll notice, this tire is in pretty good condition. It still has some rubbery feel to it, which is amazing. It's not brittle and it's not cracked. So that's uh, very good. There's the, the brake to keep the, on when you hit stop, the wheel, the wheel doesn't continue to spin and release tape through the machine. So this is what's gummed up right here. Even though it's got oil on it, the oil is just like molasses. It just really, really filthy. So we'll clean that up. And I use a lot of different cleaning supplies. I use brake cleaner. I, and you have to be careful with some brake cleaners because they can dissolve plastic. I use a electronic cleaner. I get this at Walmart. It's plastic safe. Now it may not be plastic safe for stuff 1940s and 50s. So you have to be very careful. But it's basically just a non-residual cleaner and I use that to get rid of this grease on terminals like I mean connections like this or spindles and then I'll spray um, I go through a lot of q-tips in these repairs and I'll spray just a little bit on the tip and then clean the parts
And then I think what we'll do after we get these two working, we'll clean this pinch roller, and then we'll just reassemble it with it open like that so we can see how things are working with the battery. I don't have six, no, 10, <laughs> 10 double A's. So I'm gonna have to run to the store and get some double A's, get a pack of 12, and um, then we'll power everything up with batteries and we'll see how, how things go. Remember this was gummed up pretty bad? Look at it now. It spins nicely. Power. Six point four volts. Okay. That goes here, right there, okay, and we'll clean this one the same way. Check with the meter. Nine point seven volts. Ready. Okay. Let's put the cover back on. Maybe rub some of that core stuff off. Yeah, see the warp cover, a little bit of warp right there. And some warp there, we'll fix that. We get her all back together. All right, the moment of truth here, folks. Let's see if the motor spins up. Okay, battery level says zero. Okay. All right, there is a switch right here. Power switch right here. That I is activated anytime you turn the motor on, and I suspect that that's the main power to the uh, motor. So let's see here. Are we missing anything? Maybe the connections on those battery terminals. Let's check. Let's check the power. On the external side, 6.4, 9.6. So the battery connectors are okay. This, this. This concerns me a little bit. And I don't, without looking at the schematic, I'm not sure. Okay. I got a feeling we've got one switch.
All right, so let's check. We could hope and pray we don't have a burned out motor. So I don't hear any audio either, though. So we should be hearing a crackling from the microphone. But all right, yeah, there's no power on the motor. So that's relief, I would say. Okay, so let's do this. I feel pretty certain that that switch is probably powering both the amplifier and the motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photograph of this and then I'm going to zoom in on it and print it and we'll work from that schematic. Okay, we're looking at the expanded or zoomed in schematic here and we've got both battery packs here and the motor battery pack which is the uh, 9 volt pack goes up and goes both the positive and the negative go through this external supply switch so if those terminals which I looked at just a moment ago are not both connecting and when you plug in the power external power it powers both the thing and the uh, battery packs. So if these are broken, if these connections right here are broken, or these connection, this connection here for the, uh, let's see, goes up over, yeah. So if either one of these four connections are broken, then we don't have power to the rest of the circuit. Um, but we've got to check these connections first before anything's going to work. And we saw earlier that this terminal is loose. And I got a bad feeling about that. And if that's broken internally, uh, we're not going to get any power to the motors. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get, hold it in place or turn the motor on here and see if we can hold this in place. No. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna try is we're gonna try to short that terminal. Nope. Now I can't get in there I can't get in there with this too tight. So we're gonna to have to get into this switch, which is back up in here, which means we're gonna to have to pull. Oh me. Well, let me study this schematic a little more. If we can find a way to confirm that these terminals are open or closed, they come on up here to these other switches. See here. So we need to smoke this over just a little bit more. But I got a feeling that it's either this connector or we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if those are all of these right here, then there's a lot going on on that one switch. Oh, okay, that's a good sign. We got a little bit of corrosion there for the audio and that's in play right now shouldn't have anything now yeah so let's put it back in play oh the uh, control arm just fell on the floor all right so we've got some audio yeah Hear it? So that's this switch. It has to get through this to get to the audio, if you remember. And this one uh, for the motor. So we got to start. At least we got audio. So. Okay, 
fact, let's put that screw back. Okay. It's funny that we don't have a level meter, so the level meter must be only for the motor. That's record all the way over there, and I'm holding the record button in. I didn't happen to check. Sometimes the brushes are dirty on motors, and if you get them going and the brushes clear up, things take off, but I don't believe that's, that's the case. I think we confirmed we did not have power on the motor, on the two motor terminals, so... We definitely don't have power coming up through this this gang here. Huh. I'm gonna have to three D print. Another red cover here that's, since they got red on the printer, it'd be a good time to design a new external power supply cover. See it's broken. And that'll be really simple to design and print. Okay. So I wonder this shows one, two, three, four. So there's one connector in the front and one connector in the back, apparently. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. We're, we're studying this back in here. A lot of wires in there. And I'm convinced that that's where our trouble is. What I started to say earlier was, I wonder what would happen if I shorted these two, but I don't think that's, I think that would short the bed, dead short the battery. But let's check and see if we got power on those two terminals. And we do, we have 9.7 volts. So that's telling us that we're getting power to the switch. Right here is where we're looking. And we checked that terminal and that terminal so we're, we're just basically checking a battery right across those two terminals so if i could find out where those switched connectors come out one of them goes to this ground plane and that's the negative side uh no my, my bad the positive side so it's a positive ground since they're using pnp transistors so anyway, positive bus right here. This positive bus goes all the way through the set. See it? All the way through. Anyway, that's the positive that connects all of this. And then the negative side of the battery, which we just tested right there, has got to come through and go back up. And then it supplies the motor, the negative side of the motor, so somehow I'm just trying to figure out how I can avoid digging this all apart to uh, test. I'm going to see if I can get a decent focus. There we go. You can see down inside here, 
you can see the uh, connectors that spring and connect or disconnect. They con connect with the external power and disconnect the batteries or just connect with the batteries and connect with the motors. I'm not sure what is the intention there. Looks like to me that they want to charge the batteries with this connector as well as run the tape deck. And I've got a feeling that's what the uh, point was here when it talked about um, well I don't remember where I read it but I read it somewhere might have been on this that batteries yeah might have to be can be charged okay well I'm just rambling here because I'm thinking as I'm rambling as to how we can get power through these switches to everything that powers up on the tape deck. I just don't want to have to pull the whole transport and everything out of its case, but it just appears that I'm going to have to do that. I would want to do it anyway because there's a lot of stuff in here that needs to be greased and oiled and there's still gobs of cobwebs right there's another big cobweb so there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up but we got to get to this somehow or figure out why there's not it's not making connections so I'll fiddle with this a little bit more off camera and then we'll uh, see if we can come to some conclusions. Okay, as we suspected, these two terminals are not connecting internally. And so what I'm going to do, rather than tearing the whole thing apart just to get to those terminals, I'm going to bridge those two terminals. So you can see here that I have soldered a little bridge wire there and uh, I've got the batteries out of the unit right now so we'll just clip that and now we'll short those two and I, I'm going to bring it up here and then zoom in Okay, so that should uh, solve our battery problem, our power problem, rather. So let's reconnect everything. I am encouraged that we have hiss from the uh, amplifier. It doesn't mean that it's going to be working perfectly, but it does give me hope that we do have an audio path. From power all the way through. What I do with the cover. Okay. Now. We may have some binding, but we'll... Now, I want you to see that the motor is actually spinning. So what I want you to notice is this. You'll see the set screw right there start to spin when I turn the motor on. Yeah, can't see it. But you can see the motor trying to turn, right? Let's try rewind. So this is gummed up, I'm sure. And I'm sure the cap stand is gummed up. That's why it's hesitating. I can push on it just a little bit more pressure here on the motor, and it will it will turn. But it's going to labor the motor, so I don't want to burn the motor up. So I I cleaned this and cleaned the pinch roller. So next, what we've got to do is clean these two.
Well, I'm going to uh, mute the audio playback here and just wrap this video up. We're just about an hour long, but I hope you enjoyed uh, the transformation of the Craig hand quarter model TR403 made by the Japan Victor Corporation or JVC. As you could see there were uh, some cleanup issues and some gummy oil issues that need to be cleaned up but generally speaking very little repair. I did have to bridge that broken connector. I'll never be using that external power connector. And I have another one of these TR403s in my inventory that uh, I may uh, repair and clean up and if I ever need to use an external power supply I will. I also have an external microphone that will uh, plug directly into this unit and I'll uh, so I won't have to modify the microphone input. So there's the original sticker and you can see that the case cleaned up beautifully. I used Vaseline on the case where the stickers were to remove the stickers. So that's a very low um, risk cleaning solution to get the uh, glue off of the leather. And then I used the uh, some leather polishing uh, material to brighten up the leather, but you can see that it turned out beautifully.